Hey, what's going on WordPress friends? My name is Taylor and this is Coding for Tacos. In today's video, I want to talk a little bit about a WordPress theme that I've really loved working with recently, and that is the understrap theme. I've gotten the chance to use it now for a few different client projects and I've obviously become a big fan. So my goal for this video is really just to give you an overview of the theme and talk a little bit about why I like it and uh, we'll walk through the file structure and things like that. So let's get into it. My goal for this video is really just to give you a brief overview of this theme and why I'm so excited about it. At least to me, it really feels like modern WordPress development or something like that. So it's not, not only is it fast to develop custom themes with it, but because it uses uh, Gulp, which I'll get to in a second, you end up with a minified JavaScript and CSS bundle. And really, if you know what you're doing, your website will, will be very fast for that. And even on shared hosting, I'll get very good speed scores. And, and so that's, I think, why I really like it. It's both fast for development and it, it, you end up with a really lightweight WordPress site. And uh, yeah, understrap is really just underscores with bootstrap. And if we go here to what is understrap, it will tell us. Understrap is a WordPress starter theme built using underscores and bootstrap for. Now you're probably familiar with underscores if you, do, if you live in the WordPress world like I do. It is just a very basic lightweight starter theme that way you're not starting completely from scratch when you're building custom themes. And I'm not super familiar with it. Um, I, I just know the name because it's so popular. But I can say that I really do like Understrap and I enjoy using it. What's included? SAS, NPM, Gulp, jQuery, and Bootstrap 4. So that's really why I'm so excited about it. It comes with all of the WordPress template files you could need and it also comes with all of these things set up and just ready to go. And I'll, I'll show you, um, I have a fresh, let's take a look, I have a fresh WordPress site right here. I just installed it and I'm going to um, install the understrap theme so we can take a look at that, at the template files and at the way that SAS and Gulp works. But first I just quickly want to show you um, some of these. What, what I think is very cool is that understrap can be completely customized so it can be your your main theme or it can also be used as a parent theme for your customized child theme which means you can continue to update the understrap parent theme and the child theme uh, they have a child theme you can download here on the website that will use the parent theme as a dependency. So you're still getting all the benefits of Gulp and SAS, and you can update Understrap and, and use a child theme for customization like you would with the Genesis framework or something like that. Lastly, I have this Overstrap package, and it comes with several uh, child themes that are ready to go. Um, here are some demos. So um, I'll show you this one. This would be a great place to start if you needed to make a portfolio website for a designer or an interior decorator. So these are child themes that work with the understrap theme. These I think are $59. They're not free, uh, but understrap itself is free. And so let's get back to that. I'll go back to that about page because I know there's a download link. To try it out, you can download Understrap. I'll download that. And then here on my fresh WordPress installation, I will upload it. There we go. Awesome. Now keep remember that this is a starter theme as we look at this because it won't look very exciting. <laughs> All we have here is just a very basic starter. Here is a post page. You can see we have a sidebar and uh, that would be in the widgets. So we can take a look there. Pretty pretty typical 
starter theme, I guess. You have a hero, lots of different widgets here, widget areas. And obviously, since this is the starter theme, you'll probably want to add your own widget areas as well. Um, but now let's go ahead and take a look at the, the files, the, the file structure. So I'm in themes, and I'll just get bash in here. Cool. So here we are. This is These are all the starter files. I am using understrap as my main theme, so I would not necessarily have a child theme here. Um, both ways are really fine. And you can see we have typical WordPress files, footer, functions, page.php, single for single posts, and uh, search. Nothing, nothing special. All the code, I think, is, is very readable, um, which is awesome. I, I just think this is a great place to start if you have a client and you need to build um, you need to build something from scratch, and it needs to be lightweight. And that's when I really love this theme. You can see it comes with the WordPress template files already. So if you need like a custom checkout or something like that, you need to customize the cart. All that is already there in the theme. And another thing that I think is pretty cool is you could just comment out um, the WooCommerce functions if you didn't need them. And these are these are coming from the includes file right here, the ink file. So let's see, like for example, here's the onQ file, and that is right here. It's on queuing the understrap styles, the scripts, and all of that. So like I said, one of the coolest things for me is that Gulp is installed with SAS and it's all ready to go. You would edit that here in, oh, not there, here you can see what is being imported. And actually this is very cool, I think, as well. So this comes with default styles ready to go for WooCommerce. WooCommerce style fixes, it says. Now comment out if you aren't using WooCommerce. So if you aren't going to use WooCommerce with your WordPress website, there's no reason to include that CSS in the, the file that the client gets. So just comment it out, and then it won't be compiled in your bundle. And down here at the bottom, same thing with Contact Form 7. If you're using a different Contact Form plugin, comment this one out and write your own CSS for that if you need to, and that's all. So I think that is very cool. And also here in source, and then SAS, we can find all the bootstrap, um, well, all the bootstrap SAS. And I often refer to this file where the variables are. Because say that uh, I wanted to use a CSS variable, and I didn't want white to be completely white. Maybe I have kind of an off-white color as the background. To do that then, all I would need to do is go here, Let's see, understrap, aha, understrap theme. That's right, understrap theme. I'm used to using a child theme. And then we have, in here, we have theme variables. And uh, this would be where we would put our custom CSS. So we'd put our variables in here, and then the custom CSS right in here. So to change that bootstrap, that white bootstrap variable, I could just change that here. Like maybe I'll drag it down a little. And by doing that, I am overriding that default bootstrap variable of white. So now I can use this variable for all my classes that control that color. And as you may have noticed on the website, here we are, it's all this uh, purple color. And to change that, all we would need to do is change this line right here. But nothing's going to happen yet because I haven't installed npm and gulp. So let's do that. We'll go down here, and here is our package JSON file. So we can look at all the dependencies. You can see that there's font awesome, bootstrap, uh, and a bunch of different gulp dependencies. So I'll open up my terminal here in VS Code, 
and run npm install and I'll get back to you in a second when this install is finished. Great, so that is finished, the npm install. There are some things we could fix running npm audit fix, but I think we should be ready to go. So I'm just going to clear that out. You know what, I'll just open up a new terminal. There we go. Okay, and um, now I can run gulp watch. Okay, and now you can see it's starting the watch. So now if I edit some of these CSS files, uh, for example, let's change the primary color and, uh, oh, I don't know, I'll just pick something good. Sure, that orangish, orangish color. So I'll save that. We can see it's starting styles and starting sass. And it's finished with everything and now it is minifying it. And if I refresh, everything changed. So you can see that everything is already set up between bootstrap and underscores, or understrap, I guess. Everything's already set up, all the variables are all set. So now all we need to do is just customize. But the global styles are already in place. And I think that's great. So that's one of my favorite things about it, is that Gulp is already set up. And um, like if I go into the header, let's just edit something else. Here we go in the header. And maybe, aha, navbar dark. What happens when I, this, these are all bootstrap, very, bootstrap classes as you can see. I'll change that to navbar light. And you can see that this changed to black and if we had a um, if we had a menu here that would also change to a dark color. Let me just make this a little smaller. So now I'll change this back to navbar dark and refresh. And because it's navbar dark the text is light. You might not be too impressed by this uh, just default starter here, but I've built some pretty cool sites, I think, uh, pretty fast. And like I said, you really get great speed scores because all of your CSS and JavaScript is minified for you. And for me, this uh, template structure is just a great place to start. You already have all the WooCommerce files, your setup for SAS, the functions are there, there's a lot of default CSS that you're going to need. And so everything's set up and rather than starting from scratch, uh, I just find this to be a great starting place. A lot of people like to buy themes that are close to their end goal and customize them. And that can be a good way to build a website too. But I often find that you do so much customization on those pre-built themes and there's a lot of bloat normally with them as well. So the end result is slower and you end up, sometimes you end up customizing something in a funky way and it's hard for the next developer to read or something like that. So I just find that using this theme has really allowed me to make nice websites that are, that get great speed scores, especially for WordPress. And that's why I'm so excited about it. So check it out. If you want to download Understrap, just Google it and right here, understrap.com. And uh, I'm not sure where they have the main download link. They're because they're trying to sell you the, the package. But if you go here to what is it, and probably, I'm sh I mean, it's on GitHub too. It's free and open source. So you can just uh, download it right here from the about page. So that's it. That is the understrap theme and, and kind of why I've been so into it recently and why I'm excited about it. I love the fact that it uses Gulp. I love being able to use Bootstrap and SAS. And I find that it's just the ideal starting point when you're building a custom theme because all the template files are ready to go. The WooCommerce files are there. So it's a good development experience. And probably more importantly, uh, you can still get good speed scores with your WordPress website. And I think that for high paying clients, at least a lot of high paying clients, speed scores are so important these days. Uh, so that's, that is the understrap theme and, and why I love using it and why I hope I can use it for lots uh, of future projects. 
So thanks so much for watching. Again, I'm Taylor and this is Coding for Tacos. Leave me a comment down below to let me know what you thought and check back to the channel soon for more content on WordPress, freelancing, and front-end development. Take care.